from the from the point O, as the parachutist uh, takes his jump, initially his velocity is zero, and then as time and then he starts to fall, and the time starts to go on, and he speeds up to gravitational acceleration. A small segment of the of, the, of this uh, parachutist graph for the VT graph of the parachutist graph is that this is a straight line segment. It is considered to be a straight line segment, although in actual reality it is not supposed to be a straight line segment, but we practically considered to be a straight line segment for a small duration of time and only at the beginning when the speed of the parachutist, the falling speed of the parachutist is so low that we can practically consider that there is zero air resistance. So he accelerates at a constant value of uh, 10 meter per second square. So that's why I have written over here that gradient equals to 10. Then from this point, uh, this is the, <coughs> so there exists a certain point in time uh, from which the air resistance is considered to be significant, and that's when the start, this straight line starts to curve. But all of this happen, transition happens smoothly. There is no kink or sharp corner or edge in this variation. So this is a straight line part, which <coughs> smoothly transitions into a curve. And because the air resistance is a resistive force, which increases continuously with the increase of speed, as the person, as the pressure starts to fall, with higher and higher speed, air resistance support air resistance increases more and more and more. So slowly but surely, the person speeds up faster. Uh, so the person speeds up, but he keeps on uh, speeds up less than earlier. I'm not going to use the term slowly because that might be a bit confusing. He speeds up less with every single uh, uh, for every single second compared to how much he did speed up earlier. So he does speed up because you can see the value of the velocity is increasing, but it is not as sharp as earlier or it's not as steep as earlier. So eventually at one point, his velocity becomes constant. And there's the part shown over here, which is BC. So B is basically the part where the upward uh, air resistance is perfectly equal, has become perfectly equal to the downward weight. Because these two, these two forces are equated, <laughs> together we have uh, so in this case we have resultant force that is zero that's what was shown in this equation that the person is uh, going up and down continuous uh, so the person is falling downwards at a constant speed so this is the first air resistance when the parachute is still not open the person is only falling through air and experiencing air resistance due to his body head torso hands and legs and he is falling with a constant air terminal velocity this is the Sorry, <clears throat> this is the first terminal velocity of the parachutist. At C point, the parachutist opens the parachute. Now, a couple of things happen when the parachutist opens the parachute. When the parachutist opens the parachute, <clears throat> at the instance of opening the parachute, the surface area with which the parachute is, is now contacting with the atmosphere suddenly increases. The word suddenly is key here. I mean, as the parachute is, fall, is falling downwards at a pretty high speed, when the parachute is opened, the entire parachute goes large within a very short time, almost a fraction of a second, and it, it starts to collide with the air particles really, really, really strongly because you have to understand that the person has opened up their parachute, so the person and the whole parachute is going downwards at a pretty high speed and because sudden because of the sudden increase in the surface area because of the parachute is the parachute has has a really large area uh, the number of collisions per second has increased by a huge fold <laughs> by a really big number by a big really big amount so the areas is suddenly become extremely large so what happens at collision c if I try to show you this uh, scenario using this person over here, let's, I'm, I'm gonna take him out a little bit. So let's say this is our position C. At C, the weight remains same. I mean, before C, up to, from B to C, before the parachute was open, the downward weight was exactly equal to the upward force, upward air resistance. When the parachute,
Where is this kid? Shake. Jee bar bar hatu touch chalana bar hatam hai felse. Who was this? Let the channel. Maybe. Good. I'll turn on the tar waiting room. Works for me. <clears throat> so, uh, what was I saying? Yes. So, before reaching the terminal velocity, uh, before opening the parachute at point C, and I'm using the word at, not during, at point C, the weight and the upper air resistance were perfectly balanced, which means the downward weight, which was shown in all of these figures as the brown arrow, that one, and the upward air resistance, which was re represented over here as a blue arrow, these two are perfectly equal to each other. That happened from B to C. At C, when the parachute is open, suddenly the air resistance will become really, really large. Let's say uh, the value of the air resistance is going to become extremely big. One of the ways I can show you this scenario is that this is the amount of uh, downward weight that we have. When the parachute is open, suddenly <clears throat> the value of the weight becomes this much big. Oh, no, 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 not this much big. Wrong direction of arrow. Yes. This is suddenly the air has become this much. And this change from, I mean, let's say this is happening at C. This is, uh, this is uh, happening at C when parachute has unfolded itself and right before the parachute was open within that duration of b to 3 b through c let's say the figure was uh, somewhat like this i'm going to show you these two figures to you uh, side by side so that you can have a good comparison to understand what i'm uh, what i'm trying to tell you no, not that okay so right before the parachute was open the person was experiencing equal force as weight because due to air resistance. So these two forces were perfectly equal before the parachute was open. But the instance the parachute is open and the parachute has unfolded completely, the air resistance rises suddenly to a high value. The word suddenly is key as I have mentioned earlier. And this is because, uh, because the rise of air resistance happens really rapidly or abruptly or suddenly this graph takes a really sharp turn and the velocity starts to go down now one of the key part that you really need to understand that what is happening over here the when the parachute is opened the person's downward speed is reducing the person is not starting to go upwards very important for you to understand so in this case the person's speed was downwards at a very high value in this case, also the person's speed is downwards at a very high, high value. But because the parachute got open, now combining these two forces, uh, the, air, the large air resistance upwards and the same constant weight downwards, in the, in, for this scenario, the resultant force is upwards, which has a really large value. So you have an object that is falling downwards. After the parachute has unfolded completely, the resultant force is working upwards. So wha what happens? The person starts to slow down. The person does not immediately start to go backwards. This is a wrong concept that many of us have. I'm going to give it a, give a bit of a clarification about that. But let me finish this part. The person is going to start slowing down as he's still going to still fall downwards, which means he's still going to continue follow downwards, but he is going to start to slow down. So this is represented over here. There's a very sharp decrease of the VT graph as the person is falling and this sharp decrease has to be sharp but there are a couple of things that you cannot do if you are ever trying to draw this part on your own that the couple of things that you cannot do one of the things that you cannot do for this part is that show this decrease to be nearly a vertical line i mean that is almost not acceptable because showing a vertical line means that the person nearly had an infinite uh, infinite uh, deceleration which is practically impossible to achieve. Your line over here should not be vertical. I mean, some kids they show, some show that they show a vertical line and then, then they start to do this curving and make this happen. This is not supposed to happen. The line should always have 
a little bit of uh, uh, negative tangent over here. We are going to show a very rapid decrease, but not an infinite, really rapid decrease. That's the important bit. It's a good idea. Alta Bulji Tonashan student are going to say sometimes they also go ahead and draw this part slightly carved inward. It's a good idea. If you draw a graph that looks something like this, this is also wrong. <clears throat> what you are trying to show over here that when the parachute got open, the time started to go backwards. This graph, these are on the horizontal axis, what the variable that we are trying to plot is time. Time is only going to go forward in the forward direction. So drawing a graph that has a shape that is curved backwards on the left side means that somehow after opening the parachute, the person went a bit back in the time because you are pulling the graph from here to the left side. So the person was here in, in, in the sense of time, time scale. The person was in at this time when the parachute got open, because the parachute got open, he somehow got pulled to, to a bit of a bit past, and then they forwarded this time once again. But that's not the case. This is never happened. So you cannot make this a curve like this. This is how this can be shown as a curve from this point, but a very high steep curve. With the which, but this but this line should not be a vertical, it should not be going leftward. It should be a very quite it should be a very steep line, it should be presenting a very hard decrease of velocity over this part. I'm going to wrap up this uh, additional segment that I just to draw because these are errorful parts which I warned you about. So you, should, you are not expected to do that, but they are not actually essential for our discussion further on. So this is happening over here. The person is slowing down as the, as this, uh, as the person is going downwards as well. And this will keep on happening and the person is going to go down and this velocity, this downward velocity as from C to D is going to start decreasing rapidly. So what is happening? This person is going to, uh, this person was going down at a really high speed uh, from, uh, uh, from B to C. Uh, and then when the passion got open, this downward velocity is going to slowly become less and less and less. So by, let me just use a different color. So let's say I'm going to use a green to represent the, uh, the downward velocity over here. I'll take all of your questions. Keep your questions in mind and raise your hand. Uh, I'll finish discussing up to uh, F point and then, I, then I'll, I'll take your questions. Chat window, they have questions they have now because I do not have my chat window open over here because I'm gonna I'm planning to use this space over here. If I keep the chat window open over here, I cannot use the space over here. So I cannot, I'm not looking at any of this, uh, any of your chat, uh, chat options. So don't do that. So let's say when the person, person was falling through from B to C, he, they had a really high speed. And when the parachute got open, they suddenly have a very uh, large backward uh, force. So now the person is gonna decelerate as the person is gonna falling downwards. So this entire graph represents the person is still falling downwards, but now they are slowing down. So this downward velocity is gonna slowly slow down. So to give you a bit of an idea about, about uh, in terms of number, Let's say oh, at, 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 the, at, the, at this segment, of, at the first terminal velocity before the parachute was open, let's say the person's downward velocity was, let's say, uh, what, 100 meters per second, which is a pretty high speed. And then when the parachute got open, this person is not going to start go upwards. This person is going to start to keep falling downwards, but he is going to start to decelerate. So he's still going to, let's say, after the parachute is open, after one second, the person's downward velocity is, let's say, 50 meters per second. In the next one second, let's say the person's uh, downward velocity becomes, let's say, uh, 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 30 meters per second. In the next uh, uh, second, it, it may, might become, let's say, 20 meters per second, something like that. He's still going to fall downwards, but he's going to slow down in the process of falling downwards. So his downward speed is going to become slowly lesser and lesser and lesser because the resultant force in this case is working upwards. Now, the way air resistance work, the way air resistance behave, it is highly dependent on the speed of the object that is moving through the atmosphere. Because the person is now falling through atmosphere at a decreasing speed, logically, the air resistance is also going to start to become weaker and weaker and weaker. Because now, he is not going to be colliding with exactly the equal number of particles as he was at the beginning. So as the person slows down, as the parachute slows down, the number of collisions made with their particles, that will also become less and less and even less. This will make this air resistance slowly go down as the person slow down as well, which means this arrow size, which I did draw to a pretty large arrow size over here, 
this arrow will also become smaller as the person slows down. So let's say, uh, let's say when the person slows down to one, so, so I can change this, this. So let's say the iris is gonna slowly become smaller and smaller and even smaller and smaller. So as the person slowly, uh, slowly slows down, uh, falling downwards, not going upwards, slowly slows down. So the iris is also gonna become smaller. That is from C through D. So this part that I'm discussing is what is happening to this, uh, to this decreasing part of the graph. So eventually when the line becomes horizontal once again, or, or let's say at D position, once again, the weight and the air resistance would become equal. But in this case, at the D position, the parachute is open. And then from D to E, the person is once again at, achieves a second terminal velocity. What do I mean by second terminal velocity? This was the first terminal velocity without the parachute open, which means the person was falling downwards at a really high speed, which was not safe for landing on the ground. They would have splashed like a egg or like anything else if they hit the ground at this speed. So they opened the parachute, reduced their velocity, downward velocity, and reached a second terminal velocity, which is now safer for them to land. So having, having this lower velocity, the person keeps on falling, 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 and eventually they hit the ground at position E, and they eventually eventually they, eventually they enter uh, eventually eventually they touch the ground at position e and ef is the part which is almost appearing to be a vertical line is basically the representation of the deceleration of the person as they hit the ground from air now this part of the graph is apparently looking to be a vertical part but honestly speaking any graph of a vt graph should never be a perfect vertical graph because a vertical graph essentially means that acceleration or deceleration whatever we are trying to represent is actually is infinite but it cannot be infinite but the reason i i had drawn this part to be a vertical line because compared to this entire duration of the journey the actual duration within which the, the person's downward velocity reduces to zero as they touch the ground, that is gonna be quite small. So they're gonna touch down onto the ground and then they're gonna collapse onto the ground. That much part is shown in the process of EF. So that is gonna be really small, let's say maybe one, two second. Whereas this entire journey might as well last for uh, 20, 30 minutes. So that's why I have shown this to be a pretty vertical thing. But honestly speaking, this line is never going to be vertical. It sh it should, if I, I mean, if I really zoom onto this time scale, like superbly zoom onto this time scale, this line uh, truly actually has a gradient like this, that the person decelerates to ground, but uh, it does take some time. But this time that this person is going to take in uh, uh, according to the, uh, with respect to this, uh, this total duration of time, and this part of deceleration as the person hits the ground is going to be extremely small. The duration of time is going to be extremely small. That's why this is shown as a nearly vertical line. Uh, you can represent this to be to have a slightly a gradient onto the right side. I mean, I mean, in this fashion, not in not in this fashion. This would be highly wrong. You can show it to be like this with a sharp gradient uh, uh, like this, which perfectly makes sense. No big deal. One of the important thing that I would like to tell you is that. Whenever the uh, so one of the important thing is one of the important thing that I I would like to add, add to this discussion is that we have conveniently divided these segments into multiple parts and I just discussed about how the forces work as the person uh, starts their journey from a high flying aircraft and all the way up to the reaching to the ground. I discussed this whole graph in terms of uh, the forces. There is one more thing that is involved for this graph, which is also part of the syllabus, which you call the uh, which you call the energy conversion. Now, because I did not teach you the energy chapter yet, we are not doing that. Uh, so, I, once we are going to bring up this graph once again in the work energy power chapter, and we're going to try to talk about the energy conversion that might happen, or we might actually cover the energy conversion things be, uh, when we will be doing the worksheet once again. So these are the two parts that I wanted to tell. One more thing before I start taking questions that I'd like to add is what is, is this part? Many of us have the common misconception that uh, when the parachute is open, the person starts to go upwards. Many of us have this misconception. Uh, there's a reason for this misconception. I'm gonna clear that up for you. 
the reason we have this misconception because we have seen this incident of people opening up their parachute in a lot of videos. I mean, uh, we might not have many of us or maybe most of us uh, haven't experienced this firsthand. I have taking a par paragliding jump. I haven't for one. So many of us have seen that there, there exists a scenario that multiple people are taking a jump from the parachute or maybe Tom Hanks, uh, uh, sorry, Tom, not Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks doesn't do action movies, Tom Cruise. So Tom Cruise made a Mission Impossible action where he took a jump from a very high flying aircraft. Now, let's say here is the person, which is Tom Cruise. Let's say this is Tom Cruise with a lot of shiny hair. Okay. And here is Tom Cruise's body, legs, and arms. Okay. So this is Tom Cruise. So let's say Tom Cruise is falling through atmosphere at a very high speed. And the the video cameraman who is taking this shot, this person is also falling downwards at a pretty high speed. Let's say I'm gonna label this video cameraman as uh, as uh, in red. Let's say this is the video cameraman. How can I make him red at the same time? Can I? I don't think I can. Okay, let me just draw the stick man over here. So let's say this is a video cameraman. So he is falling downwards. These are the legs. And he in his hand has a video camera. So let's say this is the video camera device. So he's holding the video camera. Now, before opening the, he also has a parachute pack over here. The Tom Cruise also has a parachute pack of his own and they are doing some uh, weird stuff over here. Maybe he's doing some engineering or saving a lot of people like Iron Man or doing some weird stuff, whatever. So the video camera is taking the shot. So they are both falling through air at, the, at pretty much the same speed, which is the part over here as BC. The way these shots are usually made, that usually in all cases, the action figure or the, or the, or the actor, they open the parachute first. And the video cameraman actually captures the moment that the, that the uh, actor or uh, action actor uh, or stuntman, they did open up their parachute. We need to see that to get us to have us the sense of accomplishment and safety of this person. We need to see that. So it is video camera. Now, try to understand, both of them are falling downwards at a really high speed. So this person is having a really high speed damage. So this person is falling so this person is falling downwards at a pretty high speed. This person is also falling downwards at, a, at, at nearly the equal high speed. And the shot was being taken. When, when the, this person opens up their parachute, this person starts to slow down. But this person still haven't opened up their parachute. So this person starts to decelerate. So if I just copy this up, hold up and draw it again. So now what happens? Now, now this actor's downward speed has become smaller. So I might as well erase this part. So now his downward velocity has become less. So now he is starting, he has started to fall downwards at a lower velocity, but he is still falling with the same velocity. So in the viewpoint of the camera, so if let's say this is your this is the screen of the video that we are seeing in our movie in our movie playing, we're gonna see that this person is gonna slowly go upwards. He's gonna move in the upward direction of the screen. This is happening because now he is falling faster compared to him. So in terms of relative velocity, for his perspective, this person is going up, and for our perspective as well, which is basically the perspective of the cameraman, we also feel that this person is going up. But in true sense, this, none of these persons are going up. They're both falling downwards. When the parachute got opened for the actor or the stuntman first, this person started to go slowly earlier compared to the cameraman. That's why for the perspective, it feels to us as if, because we see this thing again in, 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 the, in the screen of the monitor or the TV, it, it, it looks as if this person is started, has started to go upwards as they just opened up their parachute. But that is not the case. They are both falling downwards one starts to fall slowly earlier compared to the other person and the, uh, who, who opens the parachute first. So the, one, the person who opens the parachute first starts to fall slower compared to the other person. That's why we have a wrong idea 
because we have seen this kind of shots a lot in a lot of movies in a lot of videos of uh, paratrooping and paragliding stuffs uh, that whenever the parachute is open uh, the person has to go upwards the person never starts to go upwards the reason we have that feeling is that because we have seen this kind of videos a lot now truth be told if you do not observe this motion in that this kind of video let's say these two persons are falling over here and this is the ground and you are over here a big big head because if you have a few students so you might as well have a big head so this is your body and your laser here and you're sitting on the ground and let's say you have binoculars in, in your in your in front of your eyes and you're trying to watch both of these people you will definitely see that in this case when this parachute is open you will essentially see that now they are both are keep keeping keep falling you would not see in an actual case from a, from a third person's view that any of them is starting to go upwards you would essentially see that he is still falling but he is slowing down he has started to slow down but this person is still falling at the high speed well essentially this person does not fall onto the ground at this high speed when the shot is made the shot is cut the video camera start stopped working this person is also going to open up their parachute and they are all both going to land safely onto the ground so that's how we can retrieve the whole shot and eventually can put into the movie or in the youtube video whatever the video that you are watching so that's the reason that we have this misconstruction that opening the parachute the person starts to go up in true case the person never starts to go up they just keep on falling but they start to slow down earlier compared to the other person so that's what happens in, in a typical case so i'll take questions right now one by one uh sir yes sir can we say that the distance under this velocity time graph is equal to the height the parachute is starts to fall from definitely the entire distance of under end of this enter this whole thing is basically the parachute is yeah the answer to your question is yes it's a solid yes and hills and hills okay uh, adiba um sir yes if the air resistance is greater than our weight then why can't we go upward because we are already falling downwards in a, from from the earlier falling part the applied force changes our velocity but if we have a prevailing velocity it cannot change its velocity in an instant think about it let's say a car is going forward at a pretty high speed brakes are being pushed does the car immediately start to go backwards or does it first slows down to a stop and then if the reverse gear is put then the car is going to go backwards isn't that the case yes sir so if you have a prevailing velocity or or an initial velocity of the object in the first place applying a reverse force does not essentially make you go backwards in that instant first you have to make that forward velocity zero only then can you think about making the person go downwards which in this case is not going to happen because the parachute does not have a propellant um, propellant mechanism that is going to push himself upwards if this person was not a parachute let's say this this person was a uh, a uh, jetpack rider do you know what is a jetpack yes sir yes, sir. yes. Okay. If, if this person how was a had had a, had a jetpack machine maybe it was possible this person might be pushed upwards but before they can go upwards they have to be first stopped the downward velocity had needs to be first stopped only then they can start to go upwards um what if uh, the weight of the person is negligible is that possible no not person or any anything if the weight of anything is negligible then negligible compared to what <laughs> i mean um, whenever, whenever we talk to uh, bring about the idea of negligibility we always have to take into consider that something is to be considered negligible compared to anything else that is involved in this scenario so negligible compared to what mm, the air particle suppose uh, he is uh, the thing is falling from uh, from a certain height instead of the person if that was a thing and its weight was negligible then won't it move upwards hey that's my question negligible compared to what air resistance because yes, the two sir. forces that we are considering over here are air resistance and the weight well here is the, the air catch. resistance here is the catch the 
even if the person's weight was negligible compared to its air resistance, the person still wouldn't be moving upwards because that is not practical for us to achieve. I'll tell you why. Try to think about this. You have a pretty large downward velocity. Let's say that is uh, 100 meter per second. Mm. To make the person go upwards, you need to have upward velocity. So first this 100 meter per second velocity has to be reduced to zero. This has to become zero meter per second first. Then you can start to make it go upward. See my point? A downward, downward falling object cannot be started to move upwards without making it to stop first. You have to first stop the falling. Then you can start making the object rising. This process would always take some time. And this is only possible if there is a mechanism by which the person would be pushed upwards. But you need to understand that air resistance is a force that exists because the person is falling downwards. If the person stops falling downwards, then the air resistance is simply gonna vanish. Air resistance happens because of what? The person is falling or what the object, if you, if you consider it to be an object. The object is falling through air and as it is falling through air in the downward direction, it is colliding with the air particles which are exerting the force onto the falling body by an interstellar law in the upward direction. So if the person is not falling anymore, if somehow we can make this object's falling velocity to become zero, air resistance would practically vanish because you are not moving the object through air anymore. Why would the air resistance exist? That's not gonna happen. Did um, I make thank you, sir. Did I say? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, yes, I can hear you clearly. I'm sir, John is a velocity as a John parachute as a cool to see as a velocity as a when a compass is a key money parachute a waiter car no key sir is a speed to come at a key to keep it a parachute a waiter car and a velocity to come at a you know it's not because of the weight you have to understand that. The weight of the parachute was embedded within the parachutist's body. The instant the parachutist took the jump from the from the uh, from the high flying aircraft at over here, this is considered to be a really high location in the sky. So mm -hmm. the, I'll tell you why. Because when the person opens their parachute, the parachute simply uh, simply expands out of its folds. But the amount of cloth and sewing material and the cords and everything. Everything was still in, in the person's backpack when they took the jump. Okay. So as the parachute opens up and expands, the total mass of the parachute doesn't change. When it's, when it's yeah, exactly. The parachute simply gets bigger because it unfolds with the effect of the air resistance. But it, okay, sir. For this entire process that, that I uh, for the entire process of falling through here, I mean, unless the person significantly loses some mass of their own, or they simply cut off some specific part uh, of the, of the of the falling body uh, from their self, this weight is going to be same throughout their motion. That's why I showed you this downward uh, arrow, brown arrow representing the weight to have equal magnitude everywhere. Um, say, do, uh, don't you think that uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny, the moment a pair should a cooler money to put a jay to put a jar experience on a money to put a yellow my Johnny pair should put it on money there is a it to put it to put a guess and an ethician on a call to put a guess. All people who are sensation to each other are wrong because that, that's the part that I explained over here that we have that sensation of slightly going upwards because we have seen so many videos like these. But in true case, if you see this whole falling from a different perspective, not with respect to each other, you're always going to see they're falling. They're never going to start going upwards. Because when we see this falling huh. perspective, while the, our viewing point is also moving in that yeah. case, we can have, we might, we might have a sensation of, of seeing the uh, whole thing actually uh, going upward. This person is going upwards, but this person actually does not go upwards with, with respect to the surrounding of himself. It appears to be that this person is going upwards because in this screen for this video camera feed, we see that this person is going upwards, but the person does not actually go upwards. 
उट and the resultant force is zero so x resultant acceleration is also zero which we described from this equation in the last class when the force will become zero the acceleration has to become zero as well so mm-hmm. the velocity is a constant that's what but we mean shob kichu equal hoye jay mane weight air resistance shob kichu equal hoye jay well shob kichu might be a lot of things i am only trying to specify the forces become equal the upward force becomes equal to the downward force or the yeah. air become equal to the weight resultant force mane equal hoye jay Now resultant force equal hoye. Resultant force becomes zero. Weight and air resistance merge kore hoye a resultant force because these things are these things this person is falling downwards. What I wrote in this earlier case, did I write this? I wrote this part over here that resultant force can be calculated to be W minus air resistance when W is the bigger force for the entire part of the falling and and speeding up downwards. So that's why it is this person was speeding up from O to B, from B to C. the errors and weight are exactly equal to each other that's why the person is not speeding up downwards anymore he is falling downwards mm-hmm. but they're not speeding up anymore because acceleration is acceleration is zero so for this segment your resultant force has become zero okay mane sir apni ekta ye ekta mane bolchilen je jeta mane kono upor uchit na je c the d je jodi amra jodi mone koren c theke d point theke jodi mone koren ektu beshi curve pore felam apni bolchilen je naki person ta downwards chole jab mane मैं If I draw a vertical line, this means what? The duration of the du- of the reduction of this velocity is zero, but the velocity is undergoing yeah. reduction. So a point a a part two could you know? Just I mean acceleration. To be honest, which is actually deceleration. The deceleration can be calculated. This will be delta v divided by delta t, right? That's the basic equation for yeah. acceleration. And delta yes. t is you know, delta v is a numerical value as well. You can calculate this from the graph, but delta t would become zero. If you divide something by zero, how much do you get? Infinity. Undefined. So that's not going to happen because if that is supposed to happen. The person is going to become squashed or something. Hmm. So this is also one of the reasons. This this is also one of the reasons. Uh, uh, this is also one of the actual actual design consideration that for which kind of diver, what kind of parachute are you going to design? I mean, how big is the parachute? Hmm. Because uh, if you essentially design a really large parachute, which is going to produce extremely large amount of uh, force onto the shoulder or the shoulder straps or the uh, body straps of the parachutist body. Hmm. it has to have a certain mm-hmm. size so that the deceleration does take some time and they are not squashed in mid air acha hmm yes yes sir yeah beautiful so yeah nohan bolo Hello. Okay, Wasim, go ahead. Uh, Nuhan uh, might be. Uh, I'll take the question of Nuhan later. Sir, Sunshen. Ever Sunshen. Yes, Sunshen. 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 I didn't know because the person actually falls through air, and the air particles. I mean, this person is a parachutist, but he is not a meteorite or not a satellite that is crashing through air. So the person is falling through air at some speed, which is quite high, but he is essentially continuously going through atmospheric particles. So air particles are hitting him and getting away from his body. So all. typically all the heat that the person's body generate those heat particle heat energy is 
almost immediately get dissipated to the atmospheric particles. Or you can say that he, he has an air cooled body because he's falling through air. It is like he's being, I mean, if you think for a stationary case, let's say the person is heating mm -hmm. up, but you are continuously blowing a very strong wind onto his body. So all the mm -hmm. heat that his body is producing is actually dissipated out, taken out by all the colliding air particles. So typically mm -hmm. for an air, 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 air parachutist, they don't experience that heat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Wasima. Sir, a uh, parachute open kora port to hoche air resistance ki parachute shete uh, blocked hoye jay. Jai to large surface area tha ke parachute. Ah, uh, what do you mean by the word blocked? Mane parachute air resistance ta parachute er modhe chola jay jar jonno ki she upwards ja jay. Na, the person never goes upwards. I'll, 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 I'll uh, try and elaborate your question. The air resistance is a force that works upon the parachutist's body because the parachute got expanded. The air resistance does not get stuck with the parachutist. It is the air particles also doesn't get stuck in the parachute. Air particles collide with the parachute and they move out of the path of the parachute. That's the whole point of air resistance. The person is falling down with the parachute expanded out, unfolded. So the parachute is colliding with the air particles more rapidly. And as a result, the air resistance got higher. So air resistance is actually the force. And the force is coming from those air particles. The air particles which are being collided with the uh, air parachute area, large parachute area. So air resistance does not get stuck with the parachute. The arrow length that I have shown over here is a variation of the forces as the person keeps on falling. So the person is still falling, continuously falling, but I have I cannot draw a dynamic falling case scenario over in, in MS Paint. I might look at, at some YouTube videos where they actually show you a dynamic variation. But as the person keeps on falling, when the parachute gets open, they experience a large air resistance and the air resistance doesn't get stuck with the parachute because the idea of stacking or sticking usually means that you have two objects got joined to each other. That that's not the case. The air particles are not do not get glued or joined to the air, uh, parachute. They hit the parachute and then they move out of the path of the parachute. The person keeps still falling to the atmosphere, <laughs> but the rate of collision with the air particles as the parachute gets unfolded that becomes higher, significantly higher, which produces a much bigger upward pull. But the that's what causes the person to start to decelerate not going upwards because if the person was supposed to go upwards then this downward falling velocity first had to become zero that's what i mentioned over here that first you have to stop the falling body to zero and then only you can start to make them start to can start making the object go upwards yes sir okay yes sir beautiful thank you very much Thanks for your understanding and your uh, cooperation and <laughs> concentration. If I go, uh, I might as well also talk about the uh, energy conversions over here. Tumra uh, ki work energy power chapter kichu hulo to porso. Like, do you guys know uh, what is GP and K? Do you know, you know these two terms? G, sir. Yes, sir. No. no. Okay. No, I'll, I'll, sir. I'll sir. No. Yeah. I'll tell you a little bit about these two type of energies because I want to really go through the energy conversion because this was a pretty good discussion that uh, we have been doing. So I have a question. Yes. So you say that the height from which the parachute is falls and the distance under the velocity time is equal, right? So uh, while going from point E to F, the parachute is also covers some height, but we cannot particularly find any distance from E to F by seeing the graph. Yes. Because at E point, the person's feet touches the ground. At F point, the person's body comes to rest. I mean, think about it. When the person actually lands on the ground, his feet will touch the ground and then his feet are gonna fold. The person is gonna collapse onto the ground. His body is gonna touch the ground. So at E point, his feet touches the ground. At F point, his body comes to rest. 
So we, I'm not taking that the person is actually physically covering any distance for this part. But if you want to consider this, this distance to be measured, well, it is possible. Like I said, that in that case, this, this line should be, should have some, uh, some, uh, a small bit of inclination in this direction like that. But that, that would be only visible if we really zoom in on this line because this duration from the from touching his from, from his feet touching the ground to the point his body coming to rest is extremely small time duration compared to the whole falling time that's why usually it's not shown as a line like this usually this part is shown as a vertical line but there is a bit of a distance you can think for example let's say the person's cog or center of gravity which is typically the reference point for any object let's say that the, the person's cog is somewhere uh, in his in their belly so whenever their feet touches the ground, their center of gravity is still, let's say, how much? Uh, uh, half a meter above the ground. So this distance that the person is falling might as well be half a meter. So this area under this triangle is supposed to be half meter. That might be very small of an area compared to the whole area. So that's why we typically represent this line to be a vertical line. But in essence, this will never be a vertical line because that would mean infinite acceleration, deceleration. That is not true, but because it is negligibly small, compared to the entire time duration, we tend to show this as a vertical line. Or if I, if I specify your question in a in much simpler word, to draw a perfect mathematical graph, this line should be, should have some inclination. But whenever, but if you really want to draw this line to have a very large inclination, it might, sorry. It might as well, we might as well have to do this by really zooming onto the graph where was I? Mm. Okay, I messed up. So we might be able to do that. This is difficult to have the Zoom window and the Microsoft Paint all over at the same time. So let's say I'm superbly zooming in. Can I zoom it more? Okay, I can zoom in more. Even more. Okay, the maximum I can zoom in is, let's say, 800% in this software. So in that case, I might as well try to show this line, maybe like that, with a little bit of time. Now, whenever we'll zoom out and have a look at this graph as a complete graph, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the black and the blue line. That's the whole point. Do you get my point? Uh, yes, sir, I got it. Beautiful. Thank you. Sure thing. Yes, Fabiha? Sir, you said that to go upwards, the downward force would have to be zero. So why no. do people go downwards? No. Because the upward force is... No, I didn't is say that. I didn't say that. To go upwards, the downward velocity has to become zero. That's what I said, not force. Oh, okay. So now I understood. Uh, no. Sir. <laughs> yes. Uh, sir, I think gravity is not going to be able to do this. I think gravity is not going to be able to do this. Gravity is working throughout the case. That's why the person is always always subjected to weight, which is shown by the brown arrow in all of the. speed gravity. Gravity push Yes, the gravity is always working. Always in this case means always without without any variation. Yes. Sir, at which point the terminal velocity come to an end? Uh, when the parachute is opened for the BC segment and for the D segment when the person touches the ground at point E. So, or in other terms, I can say that the most right part of the or I can say that the most right part of the uh, horizontal, seg horizontal, horizontal segments of the graph is exactly where the parachutist is coming. Uh, the terminal velocities are getting to an end. So BC part finishes finishes at C and D part finishes at E. Bucho. Okay, sir. 
So uh, I would like to talk, uh, do a little bit of uh, do give a bit of a discussion about the uh, Sir? energies. Yeah, I mean, baki questions to pour anybody. If you have okay. questions, keep your hands raised. I really want to go forward uh, in, the, in the lecture. So the other thing, uh, so the the two things that we really need to understand. There are two basic uh, energy formats which we will require to understand to uh, really grasp the idea. One of them is GP and another one is kinetic energy. So GP is, stands for gravitational potential energy. This is the energy that we talk about whenever any object is moved within a gravitational field. And it has a certain amount of energy stored within itself to make some work. Now, first of thing, you need to understand the idea that work would mean that if, we, if an object is applied up and if an object is pushed by a force or pulled by a force if an object experiences force and some dis displacement happens in the direction of force that's what we mean by work done ask the ask the ask the so if we have if we have an object uh, if we have an object that moves under the effect of force this is what happens in the direction of the force then we say work is done and energy is defined by the term, uh, by, the, uh, by the idea that any object that can possibly do some work is said to have energy. Or in other words, the capability to perform work is energy. So gravitational potential energy it can be defined in a very simple term like this. Let's say if this is the surface of Earth, a very simple example. Let's say this is the surface of Earth. And we have an object over here, which is currently located exit on the surface of Earth. We would say that with respect to the earth surface, this object has zero, zero GP because it is currently on the earth. The earth is pulling it down and the ground is pushing it up. So the resultant force on the object is zero. So the object cannot penetrate to the earth. So it is practically steady there. If we take this object from here and lift it, li li lift it up uh, uh, away from the earth a little bit. Now lifting an object upwards would essentially mean that but in the process of lifting up the, this object, we have to do some work from the outside, which means we have to push the object upwards by applying a force that is even slightly bigger than the weight. So you have to, to lift up an object upwards. First, you have to overcome the weight and then give the object a little bit of upward force, resultant force, to start its upward motion. Then you can make that uh, make the available force zero because uh, once you give the object a little bit of velocity, uh, you can have uh, uh, zero resultant force and by Newton's first law, the object should be able to keep on moving. So let's say we have lifted the object up to this point. Now to lift this object from this point to this point, we have to physically do some work by our hand or by a crane or by some other mechanism. So when the object rises to this height, it will get a little bit of energy stored within itself compared to this position. The reason we said that this would have some energy stored within itself because if we now let go of this object from this position, which means if we just drop this object and allow it to fall, allow it to move on its own, what is happening in the chat window? Okay. Okay, never mind. So if we if we allow this object to uh, fall down on its own, or if we allow the object to move freely from this position, naturally the object can move from this position to this position by its own capability. You don't have to do any further work. You don't have to push this object. This object will go down because of its weight, which means the object will be able to do this amount of movement on its own. Now, being able to move on its own means the object did have some energy available to itself for which it could make the movement possible from this position to this position. Because moving from one position to another position essentially means work. You do some physical movement of masses. 
So the type of energy that we, the object used to have at this position due to its gravitational field, the gravitational field means that the reason this object can, try to think about it, the reason, the reason that this object can fall down from this position to this position is because Earth is constantly pulling it down. So because uh, if Earth did not exist, the, if Earth did not exist, the object would not necessarily go from here to here. So, be, so because of the effect of the pulling of the Earth, the object can make its move possible. So we say that this is what we call the gravitational field. Within a gravitational field, if we move an object, the object can have some energy stored within itself, which we call the GP. The simple equation for GP is given by the height. For example, if I draw, uh, uh, draw the height of the object, in this case, uh, I'm showing you the height using the lowest level of the object, because that's basically what we mean by ground level. But in other cases, we might also use from uh, center to center. They both would essentially mean the same thing. I'm showing you what I mean, just a second. So let's say this is the height, height of the object uh, at this point. In this case, for this height, the GP would be given by MGH. That's the formula for GP. Now, uh, I, I, I try to give a comma over here. So this is a comma. So this is the height. Uh, so in this case, the, by the height, I'm trying to mean that how, how much is the maximum movement or vertical height that the object could fall through. So that's why I have represented this height from the bottom of the object to the bottom of the object. In many other cases, you might also have uh, the height level from center of object to center of object. So this height could be practically shown from this point to this point as well. So it's supposed to be a horizontal line. So this, is, this can be also represented as H. To be honest, if you have a look at these two figures, these two figures are basically, damn it. I cannot draw this lower horizontal line properly. I don't know why. So. Okay. So if you look at these two, look at this figure, these two, these two heights are essentially the same. Essentially the same because, uh, essentially the same because, uh, well, have a look. How much is the gap over here? This is the radius of the sphere, and this is also the radius over, over here. So this brown level was radius amount below the blue line, and this brown level is also radius amount below the blue line. So basically speaking, this height and this height should be exactly equal if you consider a spherical object that is. So that is gonna serve our purpose uh, properly. So it's not, not a big deal. So that's the basic idea of GP. GP is basically the amount of energy stored within an object because of its height above a certain level. Above a certain level, in this case, that level was defined as, the, uh, as this level. But there can be more discussion that can be made for the GP, but I'm not getting into details for that part because we'll be covering that in the work energy part chapter. But that's the basic idea for gravitational potential energy. If you have any question, you can keep your hands raised. I'll take your questions from that point onwards. That's one type of energy that we're gonna require. The other type of energy that we can talk about is what we call kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy stored within an object due to its velocity or speed. If you have an object that has a mass of m, well, in this case, also the mass of the object was m. I, did, I forgot to light this, so this was m. If you have an object that has a mass of m and at any instance of motion, if it has a velocity of v, the kinetic energy stored because of its motion behavior, because of this movement, uh, the kinetic energy can be written in the expression of K equals to half mv square. Uh, I'm only writing the formula over here because I'm not gonna get into the derivation of this formula, but this formula can very well be de derived. The derivations are not a very largely highlighted part for your syllabus. What the CA people would like you to know is what does this formula mean? And what are the applicable cases for to, uh, to use this formula and be and for you to be able to do mathematical calculation using this formula? So they don't essentially highlight at least in your syllabus they don't highlight the derivation process to a very high importance part. Still, in most of my cases, I show the kids uh, the preferable derivations that I like them to know, uh, just to give them an idea that these equations that we are talking about they are actually consistent of uh, the physics uh, knowledge that we have. I mean, I can skip the derivations anyway. I can just tell you that this is not in a syllabus. You don't need these derivations, so we're skipping this and we're moving on. This is the formula, and learn how to use the formula. That would that would very well be all right, but I don't usually do that because, in my opinion, that leaves some hole in your understanding, which I don't like. Anyway, so these are two expressions for the GP and the MGH. So one of the one of the couple of things that I'd like you to consider. For the parachutes graph, I'm gonna draw a new graph uh, just to just to ex make experience of this, or I might, I might as well copy these up and rub all these parts over here. 
because I really appreciate to draw a fresh graph. This is all plumbed up. One of the key, uh, but a couple of things that I really needed to understand. Have a look over here. GP is dependent upon three variables, mass of the body, gravitational acceleration, or acceleration due to gravity, and the height of the body. As this person is gonna fall down from a pretty large height from the aircraft downwards, this person is gonna have variables changed. Now, like I said, the person is not going to lose any mass. He is not gonna sweat. He is not gonna pee, poop, or vomit or the, anything that is attached to his body is gonna be, remain attached to his body. Parachute is not also going anywhere. So initially the parachute was folded in his backpack and later the parachute was open right over here. So to become unfolded. But the total amount of mass that we're talking about is gonna remain unchanged through the entire falling process, which means M is be a constant for our discussion for this entire graph. Can you all agree on this? You should be. And because and for the sake of uh, simplicity i have uh, also mentioned that the value of g would be same for this entire falling duration although in two case this value of g is not going to be same i mean if we, if we go start to go significantly high above the earth's, earth's surface or earth crust the g value actually slowly becomes weaker and it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller uh, because uh, the, with further distance, where the capability for Earth to pull us down becomes weaker. It, this is governed by Newton's gravitational law, not a part of the syllabus, so not getting into that. Take my word for this one. So in two cases, the gravitational acceleration will be slightly weaker when the person is really high above in the atmosphere, and as the person slowly starts to get closer, closer, closer to the Earth, the G will slowly become stronger and stronger and stronger. Eventually, the final value of G at the surface of Earth can be considered to be 10 meter per second square, which is a rounded off value from 9.81, which is the actual value. So, uh, point to be noted, the actual value of gravitational acceleration is actually 9.81. For your O-levels physics syllabus, we are gonna work with 10, because it's an easier number to work with. Manipulation is easier, calculations are easier. Uh, but eventually, when you will get to your AS level, A level, AS or A2, we're gonna correct this value of G, and from that point onwards, you'd have to learn your mathematical operation where, where, where you have to replace the G value as 9.81 meter per second squared. So the value of G is not actually variable. For the sake of easier calculation, we are teaching you an incorrect value at your O level, which is the easier number to work with, 10. But whenever you'll get your O levels, you'll get the exact value 9.8 in 2SF or 9.81 in 3SF. So like I said, that in an actual case, the G value will vary, but for your level or for your O level discussion, we're gonna consider that from the highest point of the fall to the all the way to the ground, this, this G value for this parachute is, is gonna be a constant, which brings us to the idea that if M is a constant, G is also a constant. So we are left with what? Only H, which means these two variables are constant. So they are not gonna be varying as the person falls down from the aircraft all the way down to the, down, down to the ground. So this is gonna be a constant. So which means the total amount of GP will be only dependent upon the value of H. If the person is falling downwards, which means let's say, let's say this is the ground, this is the level of the ground, and let's say the parachutists took their jump over here. Let's say this much distance is two kilometer or two thousand meter, and the person is falling, 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 falling. Have a look. The whole discussion was based upon the idea the person is always falling. Sometimes they are they are falling, uh, accelerating. Sometimes they are accelerating in a decreasing rate. Sometimes they are not accelerating but still falling downwards. Sometimes they are falling downwards and decelerating. Sometimes they are once again falling constant velocity and then they're touching the ground. But for this entire duration of graph, they are always falling. They are never actually going up. There's a point that we established in this discussion, a bit in the earlier discussion, which means as the person is gonna continuously go fall down. So for every part of this segment, this would mean that GP will become less. The person will undergo GP loss. So GP will be uh, going out from the person person's body and that energy because the idea, there is another law for energy, which is called the conservation law of energy, which means that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can be only converted from one form to another form, or maybe from one place to another place. So you, can, uh, you cannot change the total amount of energy available to a system. Uh, system in this case means the, 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 the segment of universe that we are trying to judge for our observation. Now, if you wonder that too many difficult words over here, let me make it easier for you. 
you are currently uh, doing a physics class. So you're looking at the monitor, monitor screen, either it's a laptop screen or a PC computer monitor or it's a mobile device monitor. So you're learning physics. Good, well and good. Is this the only thing that is happening in the universe? No. There are lots of things that are happening in the universe. I mean, there are lots of things that those are also happening in your, in your house as well. So you, maybe your siblings are crying, maybe your, uh, maybe your uh, what? Uh, lots of things are happening around you. But are you bothered or are you really relevant uh, or those things relevant to your physics class right now? That answer is a no. Your physics class is currently limited to the video, audio video input uh, uh, that you are getting from your device. So for your scenario, the observed segment of universe is this audio video channel. That's what you are concentrating right now. Similarly applicable for other cases. For example, whenever we do a experiment with, uh, with physical objects, we do not observe the whole universe at once. We observe a small part of that. For example, it might be a simple pendulum, which is going left and right because of gravity. We set up it as a swing and it goes back and forth. If you're playing, if you're, if you're, if you're playing some game, your uh, concentration is limited within the people of people, within the people and the geographical location of those people. So that's your observation location. So that's what I mean by a system. A system is really essentially mean that how much of, uh, of the whole universe that we are trying to judge or that we are trying to observe for our experiment in this scenario. So that's a word. I mean, that's a segregation of the whole thing. I mean, we're not necessarily taking out that system out of the universe. We are simply concentrating on what is happening in that region. That's what we mean by a system. So in this case, as the person is gonna fall downwards, there are multiple things in play. The person is gonna fall from a height downwards so the all the first of all the reason the person has his gp is because of earth so we cannot deny the existence of earth so art is one or uh, art is an object the parachutist he is an object he's gonna fall through atmosphere so atmosphere is another object so as the person is gonna fall down he is gonna continuously lose gp and his gp should be converted into something else now if you consider this scenario over here have a look as the person is going to follow through, his speed is going increasing from O through B. From O to A, it is an uniform acceleration. From A to B, it is a decreasing acceleration. But from O to B, his speed is essentially increasing, which means from O to B, his kinetic energy will increase. From B to C, his kinetic energy is going to remain constant. Now, kids, remember, he, the person is falling down. It means he is losing height, but he is losing height at a constant speed. The kinetic energy formula deals with half mv square. Have a look. For this equation, once again, half is a numerical constant. It is just 0 0.5. Mass of the person is the mass of the person. So together, these two things would be a constant. So your kinetic energy would be only and solely dependent on the variable v square, which means a higher velocity would mean high kinetic energy. A lower velocity would mean lower kinetic energy. If speed increases, for example, the segment of AB, kinetic energy increases. If speed decreases, for example, for the segment of CD, the kinetic energy decreases. That's the basic idea. So the way the speed is going to be varying in the same way, the kinetic energy of the parachutist will also vary. As simple as that, because there's only one variable available. As for GP, H is the only variable involved. So we're simplifying the factors on the equation so that we can essentially judge the change of the energy content based upon uh, one or only one variable for these uh, examples for this scenario. The third type of energy, uh, energy change that we're going to talk about for the energy conversion over here is uh, the heat produced because of the air resistance. Now, uh, before I get into the idea of heat produced, I, I might give you a bit of a context. That is, the energy stored <coughs> within an object, in most cases, uh, the internal energy stored within an object is what we call the heat energy of the object. This the theoretical definition for internal energy is a is a is a whole sum uh, is is quite a uh, mouthful so i'm not i'm not telling you that not to uh, uh, give you some scare or anything but if you if, if you just try to explain it in very simple words i can tell you this that the energy that an object naturally has contained within itself uh, not chemical energy uh, the energy due to its vibration and due to its intermolecular forces uh, that type of energy is what we call the internal energy or which also be referred to as the heat energy. Now, try to think about it. When the person is, let's, uh, I mean, try to visualize that the person is falling through air. So try to visualize that there is this person who just took the jump from the high flying aircraft 
and the person is about to fall. In the process of falling, he's going to disturb a certain number of air particles as the person falls through the atmosphere. First with his body, <coughs> first exclusively with his body from O to C, only his body is going to do that work of disturbing the air particles. At the point C, the parachute get open. So from C to E, uh, 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 he is going to disturb the air particles with his body and also with the parachute, open parachute surface area. But he's gonna definitely uh, disturb some air particles. Now, if you wonder what we mean by disturb, disturbing in this case mean that I want you to visualize that all the air particles around this person were initially stationary. Let's say they are not moving. They're, they're definitely far apart from each other uh, because, if we, because air is a gaseous medium, but let's assume they are not moving, they are all stationary. The person is falling downwards. As the person falling down, falls downwards, he's gonna collide with those air particles and experience the air resistance. These air particles are gonna hit the person's body and later with his parachute as well, and they're gonna move out from the person's path so that the person can actually fall through the atmosphere so that he can make his path through the atmosphere. And as this thing is gonna keep on happening, he is going to move those air particles out of their original position. This is the important bit that you have to visualize. Person is falling, let's say the person pushes one air particle out, that air particle is not gonna start his journey to the ground. That's not gonna happen. Because up to the ground, there are a lot of air particles as well. What actually happens, that air particle moves sideways to make path for the person's body. That's how air resistance essentially works. So the person is essentially moving the air particles or physically doing some work onto the air particles. Like I said in this case, whenever I was discussing the idea of GP, that whenever we move some object from point A to point B, from one location to another location, we have to do some work on that object. In the process of the person falling through atmosphere, he is moving billions and billions of particles from one point to another. So he is doing small bit of work on each of these atmospheric particles. This work that is being done on the atmospheric particles will be stored in the atmospheric particles. Now, individual amount of work that he is doing on each of these air particles, that is extremely small because the actual amount of work that a person, that the falling person does on one air molecule is extremely small but, uh, small, but he's not only mush pushing one particle. In the process of falling, he's pushing out billions of particles. That's why, because he's pushing billions of particles, that's why the total amount of work that he'll be doing to, uh, onto the atmosphere by pushing out the atmospheric molecules or particles, uh, that would be in total a pretty large amount. And that large amount of energy that the, the person is going to spend upon pushing the uh, air particles out of his path is gonna be transferred to the atmosphere as heat energy, which will be essentially dissipated into the atmosphere. This heat energy will be given out to the atmosphere, but this would not practically increase the temperature of the atmosphere. Now, there is a, the, the reason I'm telling you the word practically because the atmosphere is not a small thing. The person is going to disturb a certain number of air particles. Those air particles are definitely gonna have slightly increased amount of energy compared to early, what they have earlier. But this energy will not be remaining in, in those air particles forever. This, this energy would be dissipated to the neighboring air particles as well, which means the atmosphere, the other atmospheric particles or the air particles, they're going to get a share of this energy that the person is dissipating out into the atmosphere. This is gonna happen. So you, if you think in terms of theoretical idea that would the person increase the atmosphere's temperature? That answer is yes. Would that temperature change measurable? That answer is no. Because the person is adding some energy to the atmosphere, there will be definitely, mathematically, theoretically, some change to the atmosphere. Yes, some increase in the temperature to be more exact. But would we be able to measure the temperature increase of the atmosphere? The answer is no. There are two reasons. First of all, the person is distributing all of his dissipated energy over a really large height of atmosphere. Like I said, let's say the person is taking a jump from two kilometer height. So he's gonna fall through 2000 meters and collide with billions of particles over a distance of 2000 meters. He's not supplying all of his uh, energy to a small location of atmosphere at the same time. So the energy heat is not essentially concentrated. It has been dispersed out over a huge number of air particles. So that's why the variation of energy would be very difficult. The, the variation of temperature would not be noticeable at all. 
so uh, that's the point that i'm trying to tell you that the uh, the three type of energy energy conversion that we're going to talk uh, after a while first of all is the gp gp is the energy the person does have to his body when he is starting to take the jump now if you wonder uh, just a bit prelude prelude means a bit uh, preface that how did this person get this amount of gp in the first place well the helicopter or the aircraft which is allowing the parachutist to jump from that level provided that gp the person got into the helicopter uh, let's say i'm going to use the term helicopter because i don't want to say both of the terms all the times so the person has got into the helicopter the helicopter rotor, rotor starts to rotate by burning some fuel so they can convert the chemical energy into the kinetic energy of the rotor and that can be that kinetic energy of the rotor is just starts to push the air down so that the helicopter starts to lift itself up and as the helicopter starts to lift itself up it slowly starts to give gp to itself and also all the content that is inside the helicopter as well so as the helicopter keeps on rising it slowly spends its stored chemical energy which is which was stored in the fuel burns it out liberates that energy and a portion of that chemical energy is given as the gp of the entire helicopter and everything of its content and one of those content was the parachutist parachutist so the person did get that gp from another source and as the person is going to take the jump he is going to transfer that gp to other sources so that's basically what happens for energy energy is always traveling from one place to another place one form to another form so that's also <coughs> another interesting thing that we're going to see talk about uh, in not so quite detail but quite in some sort of some somewhat detail for your silver uh, the amount that your syllabus covers in the working energy part chapter so these are the basic parts Achha. before i go ahead and start discuss, describing the energy changes over here uh, i'd like to take questions from you uh, about this part of the discussion of uh, of what these energies are if you have any go ahead uh, i have two hand raised so i'll take these questions everyone of else if you have other questions you can raise your hand and i'll ask you to uh, give the question that's the part here Oh, sorry. I could. Uh, my bad. My bad. My bad. Uh, yeah. Now you can unmute yourself. Tasneem Fariha. No, sir. It happened by mistake. I didn't have a question. Oh, sorry. My bad. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Adiba Amira. Um, sir, can more than two energies work at the same time? Yes, definitely. More than two or more than three can yes. work at the same time. Yes, so, throughout the process, uh, GPV was working. And uh, within the yes, coming, sir. Come again. Uh, more throughout than the process, throughout more the than two or more than yeah. two or three energies can work together at the same time, right? Yes. yes. So throughout the process, GPE was working, and in it, KE, uh, the kinetic energy was also working. Yes. And the air oh, is going is going to start working from point A onwards. So air three of the four, uh, so three of the um energies including the heat energy kinetic energy and gpe is working at the same time for this example yes oh. okay sir all right so like i i had i, I had told you earlier so that i'm going to liberate this graph so that we can take a little bit of cleaner view for this thing so i'm going to copy this and i might as well uh, start to get rid of this whole figure i'm not doing the getting rid of factor because Many of you might ask me questions which might be relevant to this uh, gradient things in a while. You might, you, maybe you might not. So I'm just keeping them for reference so that I don't run through some uh, problems which I don't want to have. So, okay, I'm gonna zoom in. Is it 100%? It is 100% now. So let's look at this graph. Kids, do you have your copies uh, copies in your hands? Just take yes, it. Sir. Just, just yes, take time. Yes, sir. Just, yes, take, sir. Okay, just take your copy and a piece of a uh, piece of a uh, pencil or paper pen, and write some stuff that I'd like to tell you. Sir. Problem is, I cannot see what I'm making you write. So, uh, as I'm gonna be dictating that uh, part, which I'm making from my own head, I highly beg you that do not interrupt me. Because if you interrupt me, I'm gonna completely lose track because I do not have a very functional, very efficient brain. Functional? Okay. Efficient? No, not so much. Uh, Sorry. 
স্যার কয়েকটা মিনিট সময় দিবেন আচ্ছা হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ সরি ইয়াস ইস 7 পিএম নাও কিডস উই গোনা টেক এ 5 টু উই গোনা টেক এ 5 টু 7 মিনিটস ব্রেক ফর মাগরিব প্রেয়ার এন্ড দেন উই গোনা রিজিউম লেকচার আফটার 7 মিনিটস ইন দা মিড ইউ স্টার্ট টু থিংক अबाउट হোয়াট ইজ গোনা বি দা এনার্জি কনভারশন ফর দিস কেস ইয়াস দা ব্রেক স্টার স্যার স্যার দ্য থিং দ্যাট উই উই আর अबाउट টু রাইট হোয়াটস দা টপিক স্যার আই'ল টেল ইউ ইন এ ওয়াইল ওকে স্যার লিখার পর এই গ্রাফ টা আকো be careful for the part that i highlighted earlier and roughly graph a shape ta ko i'll give you some time and label the points o a b c d e f sir ki likhte bolen graph e heading uh, topic e heading likhte bolche ekta abar bolben energy conversion of the parachutist graph I think I might have it with me somehow so that that's just a second I might not at well as well require to make you write this thing. <clears throat> Why don't I have it? I, I, I'm supposed to have this, but I don't. Ah, sir, how much money? লিখো বলতেছি as i'm going to go through uh, preferably don't interrupt me which you cannot because i'm going to sorry do we have to label the graph yes you label the graph with all the points a b c d e f e sorry o a o a b c d e f <coughs> okay start writing if you miss out any point in the lecture because of internet connection or whatever reasons uh, you skip that part and try to keep up with the dictation i'm going to be slow i'm going to repeat the uh, part multiple times and once i'm done then you, we we're going to do a final checking so that you can fill up your missing parts if you do miss any part <coughs> so try to keep up first i likho hocche graph er niche uh i'm going to just describe this in paragraphs so that it's easier for us to understand the first paragraph i likho at o the parachutist jumps from a high flying aircraft at o the parachutist jumps from a high flying aircraft and initial vertical velocity slash speed and initial vertical velocity slash speed is zero 
initial vertical velocity slash speed is zero at t equals to zero. At t equals to zero. Next paragraph, Lico. For OA segment, OA segment, the air resistance on the parachutist is considered negligible. The resistance on the parachutist is considered negligible and the gradient of this segment equals to 10 meter per second squared. The gradient of this segment equals to 10 meter per second squared. Full stop. So I can actually do one thing. Wait. Where is the graph? Beautiful. I can start writing here. Good. So my hand the Uh equals to ten meters sense card. I'm okay, Sanus. Uh, uh, which I'm gonna write it like this dot 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 equals to 10 meter per second squared. <coughs> Full stop. Uh, You can talk to me if you want. I, I allowed to unmute yourselves because I'm now writing, so it's not gonna be a big deal. But to only talk if you have to. Sorry, can you zoom in a bit? Okay. Or I can do one. I can do one more thing. I can. 
increase my font size. Let's say 14. Does that work? Is it better? Sir. Hello. Yes, sir, you can bold. No, you can bold. I don't like that. Oh. oh. I don't like that. I can. I have zoomed in at 223 percent, or I can increase the font size even bigger if you want. For example, 18. Does that work? It's fine. Yeah. Achha, okay, fine. Good. It will the actor paragraph. A paragraph in Igba. It a, it a copy yes, yes. So what do you mean by AR? A resistance. Should I write this in, in, in words? None. I think it makes sense.
W equals to key Jenny? Yeah, air distance. Hold on, I don't believe it. What happened, sir? Data, how do you check DE? I'm gonna read this so that you know. <coughs> I wrote this to be CD, it's supposed to be DE.
এই পর্যন্তই